The Free Ride World Tour is the ultimate competition in big mountain skiing and snowboarding. This year, 48 athletes are fighting for the crown in four categories. Starting in Japan, the tour consists of five events over three continents. The second stop is in Kicking Horse, Golden BC, Canada. The third competition takes place in Ordino Arcalis in the Andorran Pyrenees. Austrian powder and big drops challenge the riders in Fieberbrunn. And finally, the tour heads to Verbier, Switzerland for the traditional grand final of the Freeride World Tour. But the first stop of this year's Freeride Tour is Hakuba, Japan, where the snow is usually so deep you need a snorkel. But this year, the legendary Japao was in short supply, leaving low tide conditions on the lower mountain, but still good snow for a free ride competition in the Alpine. The cozy town of Hakuba, with its 9,000 citizens, is one of Japan's most famous ski resorts, located in the Nagano Prefecture. In 1998, this area was the hotspot for Japan's Olympic Winter Games. Hakuba is located in the Japanese Northern Alps, surrounded by nearly 3,000 meter high mountains. Famous for its snow quality and powder, the area is a mecca for skiers and snowboarders. The best riders in the world frequently come here to explore the terrain and improve their skills. In competition, there are no practice runs, so instead riders study the terrain from the opposite mountain. Due to the average snow conditions in the lower faces, head judge Lolo Bess needs to find a new face with more snow. This year they choose the mountain Kuzurezua. This face has a vertical drop of 370 meters and a maximum angle of 45 degrees. Face check, obviously a huge part of the sport for us. We don't get to go down the face, it's all about knowing how to read a mountain from a distance through binoculars, through cameras, through drone footage, and all these tools we have to figure out a line that inspires us. Taking that two-dimensional view from the front or from the picture and, and rotating it in your head to what you're gonna be seeing while you're headed down at full speed and sending it. So it's just experience in the mountains and knowing how to read stuff. So basically a quick rundown of the face. There's cliffs, more technical section on the looker's right side with it seems to be the way the wind has affected it, a little bit more variable snow. And then on the looker's left side, there are some rolly terrain features that look like really fun for me and snowboarding style, you know. And then in the middle, sort of down halfway, is a big horseshoe sort of arena and with cliffs on all sides. This face is a little bit different than the classical big mountain lines. It's more playful, uh, so you have maybe a little bit smaller uh, cliffs to jump from and more wind lips that you can use as kind of big jumps and come in from the side and do tricks. So definitely more a freestyle orientated face. With perfect weather and decent snow, the Freeride World Tour 2020 starts with the men's snowboard category. Last season's riding was packed with playful lines and big freestyle tricks. This year's competition is stacked with pedigree. Victor De La Rue, Davey Baird, Blake Ham, and Sammy Lubke are all hungry for this year's title. The three-time world champion Sammy Lubke opened up the face. His perfect blend of freestyle and big mountain skills lend themselves to the Freeride World Tour. An action-packed top section saw him float into the mid part of the face, where his board control came to the fore.
working his way across this big spine. He threw in a frontside 360 and then looked for a transfer with this stale fish grab. Unfortunately, a big ice ball in the landing proved to be the end of Sammy Lubke's run. He had to settle for 66.7. Elias Elhart sniffed around the Freeride World Tour in 2018, making solid positions in both the Fieberbrunn and Verbier events, but this is his first full year on the tour. He was desperate to make a good impression. His beautiful method up at the top saw him attacking the same section that had seen Sammy Lubke undone, but cross court he threw a backside 360, much to the judge's delight. A clean set of heels at the bottom of the face, so Elias Elhart takes 77.67. Victor Delarue comes from one of the most impressive snowboarding dynasties in the world. Older brother Xavier is a true legend of the Freeride World Tour, but Victor is busy making his own name. 2019 champion at the first time of asking. He set himself up with this huge hit at the top of his run. He managed to hold on to that, but it did put him offline and he was forced to improvise on the lower section of the face. Tracking Elias Elhart's run though, he was able to find this cross court hit with a backside 360. And that sealed a fantastic run for the Frenchman. 83.67 from the judges. You see Victor Delarue sitting in the hot seat. The rookie for 2020 in the Americas, Nils Mindich. Blew up on the freestyle scene alongside his brother, Hans, in 2012, 2013. Became known as a backcountry freestyle specialist. But he would prove his big mountain credentials on the face here in Hakuba. Working the spine beautifully through the middle section of the face into a backside 360. It quickly transitioned into a frontside air. A run packed with features. Did exactly what he designed it to do for the judges, and it was 78 points. So Victor Delarue in the top spot. Yeah, just tried to go for a backflip on top. Hopefully this went super well, even though it was the second of my entire year doing a backflip. So I stomped it perfect and then wanted to go to the rider's ride but had to improvise my run because I couldn't reach it, it was too fast. So most part of my run was improvisation but I had fun on the top. So confirmation of the results, Victor Delarue in first, followed closely by Nils Mindich and Elias Elhart rounds out the top three. In 2019, the women's snowboard category was dominated by Marion Haerty of France. She opened that campaign with a third place here in Hakuba. The 2018 champion Manuela Mandel of Austria is out this winter due to an injury. We're also missing last year's second place finisher, Anna Orlova of Russia, so the field is wide open. But besting Marion Haerty this year will not be easy. Montana grown, but currently residing in Oregon. Erica Vikander, AKA the Viking, was very strong in her run. Fourth overall in 2019. She used edge control in the difficult variable conditions to really shine through. Sixty-five points flat for the American. Australian rookie Michaela Davis Meehan knew that some of the big guns were out, and this was a chance for her to leave her mark at her first ever Freeride World Tour event. She started strong at the top, and while her run was conservative, 
she managed to pack the features in top to bottom. Managed to hold onto this landing and then float through the bottom section of the course. A clean set of heels were good enough for 68.67. But that left the reigning champion Marion Hayati of France still to drop. She got a perfect score of 10,000 from last year's tour. Can she repeat it this year? That is the question on everyone's lips. Rotating off the top wind lip, gave the judges sharp focus as to what she was planning. Fast, solid riding all the way through, confident grabs and good flow. All trademarks of Marion Hayati's riding. kept her speed up through one of the more variable sections on the bottom half of the face. And in the end, she gave the judges no excuses and came away with 74 points. Enough for the win. I got so much fun on this face and I was super surprised about the quality of the snow and finally it was so good and uh, yeah, it was perfect to have fun. So confirmation of the women's category, Marion Hayati takes yet another victory. Michaela Mian Davis, the Australian rookie in second, Erica Vikander in third. Last year's top three, Elizabeth Gerritsen, Jacqueline Pollard and Ariana Tricomi all go into the competition as favourites. Switzerland's Gerritsen is in her fourth season and this face suits her style of skiing. Jacqueline Pollard from the States claimed second overall in 2019 and is looking for victory. She is also one of the toughest competitors in the field. But reigning champion Ariana Tricomi of Italy guarantees bold lines and is eager to start her season with a win. Hedvig Vessel, the mogul skier who competed at the Winter Olympics in Sochi in 2014, has transitioned seamlessly into freeride skiing. She opened up with a very solid cliff at the top of the face, but no one could have predicted what she was going to throw in the middle of the face. She stomped one of the biggest backflips of the day, and the judges were forced to reward her with a big score, 80 points flat for Hedvig Vessel. Elizabeth Gerritsen is the self-titled Enfant Terrible of the Freeride World Tour. But growing up in Verbier, her skiing reflects some of the steepest and most exposed terrain you can ride in the European Alps. Her line on this face had a little bit of everything, very technical, but also very playful. She won the last event of 2019 and she didn't hold back here in Japan. She was chasing the win from top to bottom on this face. The judges rewarding her with 72 points. Before we see her in action, let's hear from the reigning world champion. Arianna Tricomi. It's still a magical place. I love the culture, I love the food, I love the people. So. I feel very lucky to, to be coming every year and yeah, being on the Free World Tour is a great excuse to travel to beautiful places. My approach to the season, I don't go out with a plan, you know, when I ski I don't tell myself, oh, today I'm going to drop cliffs. I just go out and usually I just improve because I'm having fun without even realizing and I see an improvement from winter to winter, so I just I guess I stay with the fun and see what happens. It 
so crazy when I think I'm double world champ. Like when I think about it, I still, I can't, I don't realize, you know, what it means. So winning the last two years has been, of course, amazing and it brought me so far and just opened up so many doors. So I'd be forever thankful to the World Tour for, for doing that to me. Everyone is like telling me, oh yeah, get the triple, get the triple. I'd love to, I mean, I can't lie, it'd be awesome to get the triple. I do my best, I might try to send it a little more because I know I, I could and I don't want to get stuck on thinking about judging and points too much, but just enjoy myself and progress as a skier and as a person. The 27-year-old Red Bull athlete has already won the tour in 2018 and 19, and Japan is one of her favorite places to ski. For someone with two championships already under her belt, her goals for 2020 are ambitious. No question, Ariana Tricomi is a fantastic all-round skier, but it is her consistency over the last two years that's seen her claim those two world titles, and it was in evidence again here in Japan. Very, very tidy skiing and very stylish skiing at the top of the face. The trademark 360 was in evidence on the middle of the face, and she didn't back away as she came into the bottom section but the 360 would prove no match for Hedvig Vessel's backflip in the centre of the face. And the judges could only push the score to 75.33. Well, I, I was super nervous, honestly. But I, I took three, four small hits, and then I did a pretty big backflip in the middle of the face. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. So results of the first event for the women, Elizabeth Gerritsen in third, Ariana Tricomi in second, and Hedvig Vessel on top of the standings for only the second time. Last year's champion Marcus Eder from Italy is not competing this year. And last year's number three, the Frenchman Leo Slemet, is injured, so will not take part here in Japan. Christopher Turdell from Sweden, who took second place in 2019, is the favourite on most people's form guide, but he couldn't live up to expectations here in Hakuba. So the field, once again, was wide open. The key thing to understand with the ski men's category is that the level of competition is so high that the skiers have to go all in. There are no half measures. The elder statesman of the Freeride World Tour, Rene Barkred, is 37 years old. He kicked off his line here in Hakuba with a beautiful backflip. No holds barred for the Swedish giant, AKA the mayor of Stomptown. The middle of the face saw a very technical pinch shoot landed perfectly. He then continued perfect technical skiing with a little cross court air at the bottom of the face. Judges offering up 88.33 for Barkred, a score that would stand the test of time. Drew Tabke is the Rolls Royce of the men's ski category. Everything he does looks so, so smooth. Like Barkred, he is a seasoned campaigner and he knows how to take one of the unorthodox, eye-catching lines that the judges love. But here in Hakuba, he was drawn to the same spine that had attracted so many skiers before him, and he laid down a perfect backflip. Things then slowed down again as he found his way to the same horseshoe zone that Rene Barkred had worked with. 
He went to the skier's left of the pinch shoot though and put in a very, very technical drop. He then floated the cross court section at the bottom. A very solid line that showcased everything the judges were looking for. He was rewarded with an 89.67, enough to take Rene Barkred out of the hot seat. Andrew Pollard was so impressive in his first year on the tour. Rookie of the year and took fourth overall with two podium finishes. Drew Tabge was all about smooth creativity, and then Andrew Pollard was all about technical urgency. A fantastic run at high speed opened up the top of the face. He then looked for a unique transfer in the middle of the face. That he stomped perfectly, shut down the speed, and then was able to line up a 360. A very, very technical run some very difficult skiing on display. Ultimately, the backflip would be the difference between Tabke and Pollard's runs. Unfortunately for Pollard, his score would be the lower one. 86 points from the judges, but nevertheless, a very, very respectable run. After earning his free ride world tour spot in 2018, Hank Billis played an injury wildcard for the 2019 season. He returned to competition in his native New Zealand and took a second place at the North Face Frontier four star. He showed that he was back and ready for the big leagues. For the first time of asking, Hank Billis came out guns blazing and opened his line in inimitable style with a front flip. From there, the little New Zealand ball of energy was able to light up both the judges and spectators, taking on by far the biggest transfer of the day. Shutting down the speed and throwing the 360 to finish. It was a very, very impressive run and a huge statement from the young New Zealander. The judges also liked what they saw and rewarded Billis with an 88.67. Another rookie coming through in 2020 is Isaac Freeland. He came through the America's free ride qualifying to claim his spot on the tour. He's a backcountry freestyle specialist, but there were no spins on offer in his run in Japan. Instead, it was all technical big mountain riding and big gnarly drops. A line that stood out for its originality and sheer speed. Freeland banked a big line with some big drops that were beautifully linked. Unfortunately, his score couldn't quite put him on the podium. And first place, the free ad for the 2013 champion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were a little bit scared about the snow and then uh, watching the guys ride it was clear that it was better than we were expecting and just started to feel more relaxed in the start gate and kind of feeling more confident and just started with a huge backflip and a bunch more fun airs and fun snow and uh, just was able to ski to my style and playfully and uh, turned out I'm on top so super stuck. So results in the men's ski category. The old hands, Tabke and Barkred, sandwich the rookie, Billis, on the podium. Andrew Pollard and Isaac Freeland making the top five look very strong for America. But as we look further down the standings, you see the strength in depth of the men's ski field with the caliber of names like Turdell and Murray down in 12th and 13th position.
No doubt the first stop of the Free Ride World 2020 was a huge success. Huge tricks, big lines, and very impressive drops. Although the conditions weren't perfect, every rider gave their best and everyone enjoyed their time in the land of the rising sun. Now the first stop of the tour is completed, the athletes will look forward to the second stop in Kicking Horse Canada. And as everyone knows, conditions in Canada this winter are perfect at the moment. British Columbia is known for steep, open faces, which guarantees the riding will be fast and furious.